This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Monday, the 14th day of February in the year 2022. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here is what we're tracking tonight. A number of key players in the international energy sector are in Guyana for the International Energy Conference, which opens tomorrow at the Marriott Hotel. The conference is coming at a time when Guyana is set to ramp up oil production, and more companies have been eyeing Guyana for the next major investment. President Dave Finale will outline Guyana's energy policy and its plans for the growth and sustainability of the oil and gas sector. The presidents of Ghana and Suriname, along with the Prime Minister of Barbados, will also address the opening of of the conference. Over 500 international and local delegates will attend the conference over the next four days. The conference's chief executive officer, Anthony Abel, said the stage is set and a number of key issues and initiatives will be raised throughout the conference, which will also bring together more than 150 companies. We have worked hard to get policymakers, industry practice practitioners, and professors. The people who from the university and the think tanks and so on, into the same conversation about what the energy future is going to look like globally, how Guyana is able to participate in that energy future, how Guyana makes itself competitive, and related subjects. Meanwhile, the communications director of the conference, Alex Graham, pointed out that the conference is expected to discuss major issues affecting the sector, such as local content with a heavy focus on how citizens of Guyana can play a critical role in the sector. We want to ensure that in this generation and in this era, Guyana is not just seen as a place where you could go and get some resources and leave, which has been an old model that we probably have suffered from. In, in the colonial past. What we want to demonstrate that in addition to being a place that's resource rich, that we could provide the quality thought leadership for development of these sectors and for our contribution to the future. The chairman of the Exxon Company is expected to be one of the speakers on day one of the conference. A number of other major players in the international business and oil and gas sectors will also speak at the conference as they all examine energy resources and sustainability. More news coming up in just a moment. How fast is fiber? Think fast. GTT Fiber has three packages with download speeds of 50, 100, and 150 megabits per second. That's fast enough to stream movies and music, to chat with Gran and Fran, to study, and more. What would you do? Upgrade to GTT Fiber today and don't get left behind tomorrow. Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo under the theme Charting a Sustainable Energy Future will be hosted at the Guyana Marriott from the 15th to the 18th of February 2022. Meet and engage with energy leaders from around the world. The conference will feature addresses from His Excellency President Irfan Ali, His Excellency Vice President Barat Jagdio, Honorable Prime Minister Mark Phillips, His Excellency Chandrika Prasad Santoki, Honorable Prime Minister Mia Motley, His Excellency Nana Afuko Addo, and many other highly esteemed speakers. Charting a Sustainable Energy Future, Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo. Miss Smash Queen Guyana 2022, National Pride Costume Competition and Coronation. Sunday, February 20th at 1900 hours at the Ramada Georgetown Princess Hotel. Come, witness our six ambassadors vie for the crown as we mash down, mask up, and make melody. People may forget the present you bought for them, but they'll never forget your scent. Find your signature fragrance at Elite Fragrances and Trade In. Located at 123 Region Road, Borda, between Ornock Street and Shiv Shandapal Drive. Call 619 5151 or 227 1255. Get a designer fragrance for yourself or loved one that they will never forget. Combo pack up, we feeling best. Sunshine stacks above the rest. There is no contest, it's the best mate, so we feeling best. Best value to how you're feeling. All the cheese is too much, ripples and more. Combo pack up, flavors galore, yeah. Combo pack up, we feeling best. Sunshine stacks above the rest. There is no contest, it's the best mate, so we feeling best. Sunshine snacks, combo pack. 
Now with a new look and new mix Grab your pack today Best mix so we're feeling best Give me one damn day For my whole family Their brand is this day Then bake, bake, bake Baked with love and passion By our dedicated team of fine bakers We give you damn bake With the same great quality you're used to We now have a slightly new look here in Land of Canaan, we are ready to give you even more. Don't wait until you're hungry. Reach for a slice of Dembeek. Dembeek, 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 healthy, wholesome living. We've got exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow care Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come full get color. your Buster, Buster $100. Welcome back. On the eve of the opening of the International Energy Conference in Guyana, the leader of the People's National Congress Reform, Aubrey Norton, is complaining to the international delegates and visiting heads of government about the opposition being left out of the conference. Mr. Norton said the government continues to seek to dominate and control all aspects of life in Guyana and has refused to invite the parliamentary opposition to participate in the energy conference. The PNC leader said that other key stakeholders have also been left off of the invitation list. As we welcome these heads of state and government, they should be made aware that the PNCR remains committed to its call for the country's oil wealth to be used for the benefit of all Guyanese, especially those who are less fortunate and poverty stricken. Even as oil production is about to triple, there continues to be an increasing disconnect between such developments and the daily reality and experiences of ordinary Guyanese. Budget 2022, the country's first oil budget, compounded this pervasive sense of despondency among our citizens by its stingy offerings to the poor and its generosity to the well-off and well-connected. According to the PNC, leader Guyana's rich natural resources should be used to uplift the people of the country and transform the country urgently and comprehensively. But that should be done transparently. He also raised the issue of the bribery allegations against the vice president and the need for there to be a proper investigation of those allegations. The vice president, Barra Chagdio, has repeatedly denied the allegations that he accepted bribes from Chinese businesses to land big contracts in Guyana. As expected, what appears to be credible allegations of corruption against Vice President Jack Leo Sugate were publicly exposed. And since he has tried to distract Chinese people by throwing sand in their eyes, he has attacked opposition members of parliament and suggested that there is a U.S. government conspiracy to undermine China's influence in Guyana rather than being truthful and come clean. No doubt, Vice President Jack Leo will use the occasion of the International Energy Conference and Expo to hobnob with world leaders, diplomats, and other VIPs in a grand show of pretense that all is normal in Guyana. Mr. Norton said Guyanese are fully aware that the allegations of high corruption come at a time when large infrastructure projects are being hatched. And that's why he believes there's a need for a proper investigation of the allegations. There are now just over 1,000 active COVID-19 cases in the country, with less than 70 of those persons hospitalized. The latest figures released by the Ministry of Health reflect a sharp decline to what existed a month ago, when the country was dealing with about 9,000 active cases and a steady increase and spread of the virus. In the past month also, the Ministry of Health has seen an increase in the number of persons seeking first and second doses of the COVID-19 vaccines. On average, we did 453 uh, first doses per day. And uh, in terms of second dose, we were doing about 588 second dose uh, per day. 
uh, booster doses was close to 682 booster doses per day. Over 62% of the country's adult population is now fully vaccinated, but there is still a large number of persons who are still to return for their second dose shots. And the Ministry of Health is encouraging persons to ensure they get the second dose. There is a difference between first and second dose, and that's one of the areas that we'll have to work on because people would remain partially vaccinated if they only got one dose. And therefore, we want to encourage persons who have received just one dose to make sure that they get uh, the second dose. Back in January, Guyana experienced a surge in COVID-19 cases with a daily average of close to 1,000 new cases. The Ministry of Health announced today that it has finally dispatched samples to the Caribbean Public Health Institute for testing for the different variants of the virus. Although it is still to be confirmed, it is suspected that a fast-spreading Omicron variant of the virus has been in Guyana since last December. The Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry has welcomed the decision by the government to remove the national COVID-19 curfew. The Chamber in a statement said the removal of the curfew marks the first time in seven years that Guyana has reinstated what it sees as a component of social freedom. Referring to the 2 a.m. curfew, which was imposed by the former government, as well as the COVID-19 curfew, which was imposed at the beginning of the pandemic in March of 2020. The Chamber of Commerce said a night economy, as the general public is aware, serves as a critical source of income for Guyanese. And the arrival of the novel coronavirus dealt a further crippling blow to the already strained night economy. The Chamber said with a breakthrough of vaccines against COVID-19, the inoculation of Guyanese and the understanding by the current national administration of the importance of the night economy, the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce believes that this constitutes the conditions for the removal of the curfew and the reinstatement of the component. Notwithstanding the relaxation of the curfew, the Chamber of Commerce is urging persons to be responsible, adding that ending the curfew does not mean the end of the pandemic, and it has also called on Guyanese to get vaccinated and follow the established protocols. While the government has lifted the COVID-19 curfew, a number of restrictions still remain in place for social events. According to the updated COVID-19 guidelines, citizens are still prohibited from hosting, promoting and attending private parties. Under regulations too, citizens are also prohibited from attending clubs and discos and water parks. And there are still restrictions on the hosting of wakes and vigils and other social gathering events. Let's tell you now that the Civil Society Group Article 13 has expressed concern with the recent developments at the local office of the Ghana Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, where the government has terminated the services of Dr. Rudy Jadupat as the coordinator and replaced him with Dr. Prem Mazir. The EITI sets a recognized standard for accountability and openness as it relates to the proceeds from the extraction of all natural resources. In defending its decision not to extend Dr. Jadupat's contract, the government claimed that he is a member of the Opposition Alliance for Change. Both the AFC and Dr. Jadupat have shot down that accusation, saying that he has never been a member of the AFC or any other political party in Guyana. The Article 13 group in a statement said the government's accusation holds no weight since it has now replaced Dr. Jalupat with a well-known supporter of the PP Civic, Dr. Prem Mazir, who once headed the government information agency under a previous PP Civic government. The group said it fears that by replacing Jalupat with Mazir, the integrity of the work of the EITI will be compromised and that Guyana and its people will be the loser internationally among international investors and multilateral institutions. Guyana became an EITI implementing country in October 2017, and its Guyana validation on the EITI standard commenced on the 1st of October last year. The GYEITI has published all the annual reports required for the years 2017 to 2020, and the preparation of the report for 2021 is in progress. The main opposition political parties have also called out the government over its decision. The Alliance for Change, which is part of the opposition APNU-AFC coalition, has flagged the government for withdrawing money from the Natural Resource Fund without the board which is supposed to oversee the fund being constituted and in place. During a press conference today, AFC General Secretary David Patterson said, although the legislation caters for the board overseeing the operations of the Natural Resource Fund with powers to scrutinize how the money is spent, the money which will be withdrawn to help finance this year's budget will not be properly accounted for, since 
the board, whenever it is in place, will only be able to seek information and money that has already been spent. Even with the board in place, Patterson argued that it will be difficult to track how the oil funds will be spent since the government has not identified specific projects that the money will be spent on and has only said that the money from the fund will go to the consolidated fund. Mr. Patterson said his party is suspicious about how the money from the fund will be utilized. AFC leader Kemraj Ramjatan shared similar views and went as far to say that the process of managing the NRF fund is turning out to be a mockery. But despite those concerns, the Alliance for Change said it is ready as a party to put forward nominees to sit on the board, although the opposition has not yet been approached to nominate a person to sit on that board. Farpan and Mendes is committed to promoting development through quality, service and integrity. Customers are guaranteed genuine products, reliability and excellence in service. Their corporate head office at Providence affords you the added convenience of a spacious showroom with secured parking. Farfan and Mendes continues to offer their valued customers a wide range of genuine and affordable German-engineered equipment. They are leading the way in clean, green alternative energy solutions with industry-leading brands of solar equipment. So visit their showroom at Providence and enjoy efficient and courteous service. Farfan and Mendes, offering you solutions you can depend on. You taste the cheese, you hear the crunch. Grab a zoomers and zoom into fun. And with the first taste, you feel like you don't want it done. Blast off to a whole new place with every single bite. The cheesy goodness bring your taste buds alive. So let's just zoom into fun with this wheel-shaped light. Zoomers, zoomers, zoom into fun. Is Mocha. Miss Smash Queen Guyana 2022 National Pride Costume Competition and Coronation Sunday, February 20th at 1900 hours at the Ramada Georgetown Princess Hotel Come, witness our six ambassadors vie for the crown as we mash down, mask up and make melody Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo under the theme Charting a Sustainable Energy Future will be hosted at the Guyana Marriott from the 15th to the 18th of February 2022. Meet and engage with energy leaders from around the world. The conference will feature addresses from His Excellency President Irfan Ali, His Excellency Vice President Bharat Jagio, Honorable Prime Minister Mark Phillips, His Excellency Chandrika Prasad Santoki, Honorable Prime Minister Mia Mo his Excellency Nana Afuko Ado, and many other highly esteemed speakers. Charting a Sustainable Energy Future, Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo. We've got exciting news! All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in. Come get your pasta, pasta 100 dollar, dollar Come get your pasta, pasta 100 dollar, dollar Fuel it up and drive, super, 95, two up Fuel it up and drive, super, 95, two up Protect your fuel system, boy High mileage and performance, boy Guyot Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyot's Super 95 Gasoline. A 
Across the region tonight, Curtis Dickinson has dropped a bombshell on the ruling Progressive Labour Party by quitting as Bermuda's finance minister just days before he was due to deliver the annual budget. The 2022-2023 fiscal package is due to be delivered on the 25th of February. Bermuda's Premier David Byrd, who has previously held the finance portfolio, said he had reluctantly accepted Dickinson's resignation. He said Bermuda has been well served by the minister's steady and thoughtful hand at the helm of the government's finances and fiscal strategy. He said Dickinson led a financial support response to COVID-19 and invested tremendous personal energy and commitment to ensure that the needs of the island's workforce were met as people were impacted by the necessary strict public health measures. The statement gave no indication of who would take over as the finance minister in Bermuda. In Trinidad, wealthy business people are grooming police officers for favors. That's according to the acting police commissioner, MacDonald Jacob. And he has cautioned officers that there are persons in society who may take advantage of them because of their profession. In an interview with the Sunday Express, Jacob said the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service had been made aware in recent times that there were members of society, especially businessmen and persons of wealth, who would befriend officers in their communities with the hopes of securing favors at a later time. Later on, he said the officers would execute actions for said favors and because of this would fall under the radar of the Professional Standards Bureau of the Police Force. The official said in the past three years, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service has arrived arrested several persons for various rackets, with specific mention being made of a case which was reported last September. And finally tonight, international news. At least seven people, including two children, were killed in a fire caused by a huge explosion in southwest France. Several buildings were set ablaze on both sides of a street in the seaside town. Five fighters were still searching for victims up to news time. Two small blocks of flats were also damaged by the fire. The cause of the original explosion is not yet known, according to the BBC. But France's interior minister, who visited the scene of the accident on Monday, said the current death toll of seven was only provisional, while emergency services continued to search for survivors. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.